He says, God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. <clears throat> Do you see and understand that God is jealous for you? Well, wait a minute. God's not, what do you mean jealous? Jealous is a bad thing. No. This jealousy is a godly jealousy. A jealousy for you in your relationship to Him. Because if you're giving your relationship to someone else, and I'm not talking about husbands and wives here. I'm talking about if you're giving your life to something other than God, you are committing a horrible sin on Him. He is your husband. You are the bride. And if you're not giving yourself fully to your husband, you're giving yourself to someone else. And this is a horrible sin, a spiritual adultery. That's what this sin is. We turned our hearts away from God. We turned our hearts away from serving Him. And He's jealous for us. He wants all of you, not part of you. He wants every bit of you. Not some of you. It's time we stop our self-seeking. And it's time we seek God. And then learn also to put others ahead of us. Do you want more grace from God? <coughs> I'm asking you a question. Yes. What's it say? If you want more grace, what's He tell us to do? Be humble. Humble yourselves in His sight. He will raise you up. Stop trying to exalt yourself. Stop trying to gain a name for yourself. Stop trying to get attention for yourself. Well, they just don't see what I'm doing. They just don't understand. They just don't see it. And, you know, and it's time they understand that God sees what you're doing if you're doing it for the right reason. If you're serving Him for the right reason, folks, He will reward you. He says that what you do in secret, the Lord which sees in secret will what? Reward you openly. You're not trusting God to reward you openly if you're seeking it for yourself. It's time we understand the cure for this wilderness in the church. You know, Paul says to the church, I need to be speaking to you as spiritual. But we have to go back to speaking things because you're carnal. We find in James 4 and 7, here's the answer for our carnality. Here's the answer for our worldliness. Therefore, submit to God. First off, there's your first answer. Submit to God. Secondly, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Stop making excuses for the devil running roughshod over you. You just don't understand that devil just got me over a barrel. No, he don't. Resist him. I know sometimes it's not easy. It's not easy resisting temptation. It's not easy resisting the devil and what he tries to bring to you. And it's so easy to give into the flesh. But submit to God. Resist the devil. The Bible says when you do this, the devil will flee from you. Doesn't mean he won't come back. He'll go away for a season, but he will come back. But you continue that way. You continue to resist him. And folks, the more you, the resistance is built up, the more strength you'll find in the Lord Jesus Christ. The more confidence you'll have in what God is doing in your life. Here's the, here's the third. Draw near to God. Draw near to God. Not only at church in your worship. Draw near to God in your prayer. Draw near to God in reading the Bible. Draw near to God in your thoughts. How often do you think of God? You know, this is what, this is what concerns me with a lot of people in Christianity. They, they've got things marked out of what they need to do each day. And there's nothing wrong with having an orderly life. Okay? But we've got to be careful that we, we don't become more like the Pharisees. The Pharisees' security was their ability to obey all the different laws and, and, the, and the traditions of the fathers. And it's like every day, okay, I said my prayers, I did this, and they just start going off the list. I went to church this week, I gave in the offering, 
Let me see what else I need to do. Okay. Uh, you know, I'll say, I'll, you know, and just the list goes on and on. And you make your own little list and you become secure in your little list. Well, I say my prayers. And that, 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 that part right there concerns me. You know, we do need to find a time where we have our prayer closet. To get away from the busyness, get away from the loud things around us and just have a time with God. But if, if you're only using it as just a list of a part of your list to mark it off, well, I'll say my prayers. I felt good about that today. What's the Bible say about prayer? It says pray continually. It tells us to pray in the Spirit on all occasions. There's, there's, it's not, it doesn't say just find a little, a little place every day. There's going to be times when you're not going to have time to just come to the altar and pray and have, have, your, little, have your time with God. You need to be praying all the time. Your walk with God. Thinking about God all the time. Drawing near to God in your thoughts and your prayer. Drawing near to God in your walk and everything is about you. Get closer to God. And here's what God will do. The Bible says he will draw near to you. Let me give you an example. Real quick. Give you an example. The prodigal son goes away for a season. Squanders his inheritance. He sins. He realizes he sins. He comes back. And the father comes to him. Meets him down the driveway. And hugs him. Puts a robe on him, puts a ring on him, or ear, uh, uh, I think he pierces his ear, puts a ring on his finger, puts a ring on his finger, I'm sorry. Gives him some shoes, throws a party. The father wasn't waiting at the house for him to come down and just do this. No. The father went right to him. That's what God will do to us. When we come to God and draw near to God, the Bible says he will draw near to us. Some of us I've heard say, well, I just feel like God's far away. I feel like God's away and I just don't feel like He's hearing me. Are you drawing near to Him? Have you realized where you're at so that you can't get closer to Him? Because He will resist you as long as your pride is in place. He just told us that in the same chapter. He told us that he resists, I'm sorry, in chapter 3. He told us he resists the proud. If you in your pride stay away from God, he stays away from you. But as soon as you humble yourself and you draw near to him, the Bible says he will draw near to you. I don't know about you, but in my days of trial, in the days when I know the devil's attacking, I want to be near God. And I want to know that I'm in the shadow of the Almighty. And I want to be in the most holy place. And we can be there. Did you know that today? Because of what Christ has done. Because He has taken away this wall of partition. This wall, this partition of a separation that once was there is no longer there because of the blood of Jesus Christ because what He has done for us. We no longer have to be separate from God. We can come to Him and as Hebrews 4 tells us, approach the throne of grace. The Bible says we may obtain it our grace in our time of need. Now, we see also in this same, and I'll, I'll get on as fast as I can here. I'm sorry for, but it says, cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. See, James isn't pulling punches here. Stop making excuse for your sin. Stop dabbling in sin. <coughs> cleanse your hands of that. Get away from that, he says. Cleanse it. Live your life the way God wants you to and intended you. To do. Purify your hearts. The Bible says the pure in heart will see God. Stop being double minded. Stop, well, should I do this? Should I stay? Should I go? Like that song says. Doubt and unbelief keep us away from keep us away from seeing God move in our life. Let's go on. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Well, now, that's a gloom and doom preacher. I want preachers to make me feel good all the time. I want to hear those stories that make me laugh and feel good about being at church. But you know what? 
We were studying in Ecclesiastes that the day of death is better than the day of birth. A day of mourning is better than a day of life. And you think, well, wait a minute, God, you sound like an old Puritan Quaker preacher somewhat, some sort. And you sound like that Jonathan Edwards who's a hand of sinners in the hands of an angry God. You know, I just don't think I like that feeling. But you know what causes us to think clearly when someone dies? There's no better opportunity to think clearly about eternity than when you're at a funeral. Do you rejoice that someone died? Absolutely not. But it does cause you to think. Even the ones who, even at a younger age, if they're there and they actually see grandpa or grandma or mom or dad or somebody that's close to them in that casket, they're not, no longer there. Where'd they go? They might ask. You have to observe that. You have to see that. It causes you to think clearly. But if you're laughing all the time, you're living life the old merry way, and you never think about eternity, you will only find at the end of your life, you only see doom and destruction. And of course, it's a lot better to weep and mourn a little bit in this world. It's a lot better to be hurt a little bit in this world. And I'm talking about hurt here and realize you're a sinner. I don't know about you, but I don't like realizing I'm a sinner. It isn't fun. Is there any time that's ever been fun when your dad or your mom chastised you? Did I walk out of that room that night? My dad whipped my hind end. Oh, thank you, Dad. This was a great time of discussion with you. It wasn't. Well, let me tell you what that did. It set me on a better path. Amen. We don't like thinking we're sinners. We don't like thinking we've ever done anything against God. But it's good for us to know that we have. Because when we come to that realization, then we can do something about it. We either reject it or we accept it. And then we find out how we can cure the sin problem. And you can't cure the sin problem, but you can cure the relationship by giving your life to Him. You can understand right now that I don't have to be away from God. I don't have to be an enemy of God. I can be, as we sing that old song, I'm a friend of God. Yeah. And I'm a friend of God only on the basis of what Jesus Christ has done. Amen? Amen. And there is what the reward is. If you keep that in James chapter 4, Lament, mourn, and weep, but you're back to return to mourning and joy to gloom. Here is the reward. 